Hello, I'm going to review Gears of War Judgment on the 360. Uh, this might be a lengthy review, but bear with me. So to start off, I'm going to start with the campaign. The story, the campaign of the of the game, I think, is probably the weakest in the Gears of War franchises. Uh, but I'll get to the story later. I'll get I'll start talking about the meat of the campaign where uh, you go through each section as four four characters that will le uh, will eventually explain why Baird, he's the main character, is being set on trial for uh, a war crime or whatever they want to call it, whatever, because he's not a tribunal. Yeah. Uh, and the way that it's structured, I think, is probably the worst structured. Like, you can almost just breeze through this game really fast, but uh, the thing that I just really don't like, and before, you know, Gears of War 1 through 3, you always had this big sense of accomplishment, and you could always just go through all these acts and just be like, wow, that was, you know, something. And here they lose that variation. Uh, and, like, Gears of War 1, there'd be moments where you would have to fight a berserker with the Hammer of Dawn, and then, you know, next next thing you know, you're trying to uh, go through a security lab, and there's this, all this weird, you know, variations within the first three Gears of War games. And here it's just... It's, you know, streamlined into an arcade-esque title. Uh, you, you can find declassified missions where you can just have a challenge within that game. It's pretty much like the skulls in Halo. And, it's, I mean, it rewards you more, but it's just... You never have the urgency to do it. You always just look at this like, oh, I don't need to do that. And, uh, and, then, and as I said, it's structured like, like an arcade title, like Left 4 Dead. I, actually structured it almost like Left 4 Dead where you can, you know, by the end of the section in Gears of War, you just have to hold off an area while these waves of locusts come in. And that is just very bland. That's something that Left 4 Dead did in, in both games. And it was just, you know, it got away with it because it wasn't, you know, about this narrative. It wasn't about anything. This had just a narrative. And having that is just like... It, it makes the campaign seem like an afterthought, and Gears of War, to some extent, yeah, it's not a story-driven game, but there was at least some focus to to that narrative, and to go along with it, this just doesn't have that. It doesn't have that content, and uh, and the story, I think, is probably the weakest of all the Gears of War games, and that's saying something. I mean, I didn't really like uh, two story at all, but this one was just, they had this great premise and then they just didn't go anywhere with it uh this was at the beginning of this was like right after emergence day which is pretty much the beginning of the locust war and you're sitting there it's like okay well are we gonna see people like wearing a panic are we gonna see this you know really you know hectic kind of atmosphere or anything no you don't, you don't see that it just feels like every other year's war game and it shouldn't feel that way since it's the beginning of the war it should feel more you know you should have more of a scale of what is at stake. And Gears of War 3 has that scale, but this one doesn't but this one could have taken that way more since it's the beginning and you don't see that. It just seems very Oh well that that happened. And it just you, you just don't care anymore and you don't have the sense of care for these characters and these characters seem very bland and it's just like, oh yeah and it's just you don't really get this connection. And Gears of War 3 had th that connection. So yeah, the ending was just very disappointing. The Aftermath campaign you'll unlock later, it just feels like a, D a DLC campaign for Gears of War 3 that didn't, you know, get released, which is weird. Um, and that part actually plays a lot like Gears of War 3 in the Aftermath section, which, you know, it's kind of like, well, no dub, because it takes place in Gears of War 3, but, you know, I was expecting at least for it to play a little bit like Dodgement, but it doesn't at all. It, it has that feeling and atmosphere that... Gears of War 3 had, uh, but it didn't have a really resolved ending. It was just like, well, let's see you in Gears of War 3. So, uh, the multiplayer is probably the most controversial change, and I think this is right where the reviews can get really long, so bear with it. Uh, with this multiplayer, the reason why I say it's controversial is because they, ch they changed a lot of the Team Deathmatch, uh, uh, format. For instance, you're, you can't be downed anymore, you're, you're just getting, it's straight dead, 
you go immediately to death. Uh, which, you know, they then put out a uh, system like Gears of War 3 he had, for instance, where if, if an enemy shoots you, you'll be down until your teammate revives you. And then if you're down, the enemy could also execute you by any means, which was a great way to, to demonstrate to that, to that player you're, uh, you're annoying and, you know, here's the punishment for that. Now that's all gone for a very generic, basic kind of gameplay mechanic, which I didn't really care for. Uh, and, and it almost loses the personality that Gears of War had, where, you know, if you go to, like, a room and say, hey, have you played Gears of War 3's online or whatever, and they will immediately know what you're talking about, and they'll immediately associate, oh, that game where you get, get downed and, you know, get, you know, get executed and all this other cool stuff, and, and that, it just sucks that right out, and it just replace it with this a very simple multiplayer that would that I would be okay with in Gears of War 1 but not in a game that you know takes place after all these refinements of the multiplayer where Gears of War 3 was seriously the perfect package for online and these changes is, as I said it makes it lose its personality where in Team Deathmatch and Gears of War 3 1 through 3 where one team would be COG, one team would be Locust that was such a cool dynamic where you didn't need these color specifications and it adds so much to the gameplay, even in multiplayer. And this is something that, you know, didn't occur to me when I was playing it, playing Gears of War 3 Online initially, where if you're a cog and you're just like going around a corner and you hear locust grunts, you're like, oh, my, the enemy is like around that corner, I could, I could get ready for him. Now everyone is a cog in this in judgment and you lose that sense of strategy where you can tell where the enemy is just by the just by hearing grunts or whatever, and that's gone. And, you know, some people are saying, well, that's gotta be, that's cheap, and, but it's like, no, it's, it was actually really well balanced, because it, because Gears of War 3 asks you to pretty much think like a soldier, like, well, like, you're so immersed in that, you know, arena, now it's just, well, this go shoot, and uh, to go on with that, another thing that they changed was, uh, you can, no longer carry a shotgun with an assault rifle. You start out with either holding a shotgun or or retro, whichever one you, um, which whatever one is in your preferences. You start out with that gun and a handgun. You don't have three weapons. You only have two, which is your handgun, your primary, your primary gun. Uh, you can switch out your handgun for a shotgun, but that's if you find it in the map. Uh, and that's another thing. That, and this is where it starts getting annoying. Uh, in Gears of War 3, you can punish people for camping easily just by shooting them with a few uh, lancer rounds, then run up with them with the shotgun, and then just finish the job. And that allowed a lot of strategy and thinking, saying, like, well, I can't just walk right into this. Now it's just, it says, never mind a strategy, just go and shoot, because everyone will be moving around, and you can't stay in one place for too long. And yeah, that's great to get rid of campers, but they're still camping, and... You can't really go up to a camper and stop them because you don't have a shotgun. And, you know, yeah, you can start out with a shotgun, but then if someone's far away, your shotgun will be pointless because they will have the upper hand just because you have to get close to them for the shotgun to actually do something. So this, so yeah, this was a really uh, puzzling change that really got under my skin when I started playing, where it was just like, oh, I could have won if I had a shotgun. And it was just, it almost rewarded other players for using just the shotgun. And in 3, the game rewarded you for actually being skillful and actually knowing what you're doing. This game just review, this rewards you for just the dumbest things that you could, that, you know, is just basic instincts within a game. Uh, the new gameplay mode that they introduce is Overrun. And this is pretty much where they probably put all their attention to. And rightfully so, I think Overrun is probably the highest points in the game. I think that's the only thing I actually really liked in uh, the multiplayer. Uh, it's just generally like, you know, people, one team is COGS trying to protect the uh, E-hole the, um, yeah, e covers, while the locals are trying to destroy those covers. So it's pretty much just like that kind of uh, gameplay. And they have different class systems, and that's, you know, and that's cool. I love, that is like the really cool thing about Overrun, but... If I were to tell someone who loves Gears of War 3, it's multiplayer, and if they came up to me and said, should I buy Judgment, I can't recommend it. Uh, because there's just so many things that Judgment changed that is just, 
you're not gonna, it's either gonna, you're gonna love these changes or you're just gonna hate these changes, and these changes are just very bittersweet. That said, the game is fun, but it's probably the most disappointing Gears of War game I've played. So, with that said, uh, that's the end of this review. I give it an 8 out of 10.